Good morning, everyone. I want to start us with a game that's going to get us up and moving a little bit. In this game, you need to choose between two things. Let me give you an example. I may say, sit down if you are still wearing your pajamas and stand up if you are wearing regular clothes. And then you'll go ahead and do it. I'm standing up because I'm wearing regular clothes. All right, are you ready? Here we go. Sit down if you like cats better and stand up if you like dogs better. Can you see me? I'm sitting down. I like cats. My cat's name is Gus. Okay, that one was easy. Here's the next one. Do jumping jacks if you like cake better and run in place if you like pie better. I love pie. Can you tell? I really love pie. If I run as fast as I love pie, I love it so much. Okay, here's the next one. This one's gonna work you. Do push-ups if you like going to the mountains and do sit-ups if you like going to the beach. <laughs> sit-ups. I love the beach. It's my most favorite place. I can spend all day every day there. All right, we have two more. Turn in circles if you like reading and jump up and down if you like watching TV. I think I need to do this. Because I love both of them so much. I love to read. I love to watch TV. Is anybody else doing this? Oh my. Okay, last one. Wiggle your arms if you would love to have a lot of siblings, brothers and sisters, and do karate kicks if you would rather be an only child. I would love to have lots of siblings. I only have one, and I have a great sister-in-law too. I wish I had like 10 brothers and sisters. Okay, so it's really fun when we get to make silly choices like that. If you remember, we're talking about what makes people special. And one of the things that makes us special is we get to make choices. God made us in his image so that we could know him. And when we know him and he loves us, we get to choose to follow him and love him in return. On our timeline here, you'll see that last week we talked about Jesus' early miracles and today, we're going to talk about Jesus teaching in Nazareth. When Jesus was doing miracles, people were amazed at the stuff that he was doing. Last week, we talked about that even though these miracles were amazing and they showed that he was the Messiah, the Son of God, they weren't the most important thing that Jesus came to do. Jesus came to preach and share the gospel so that people would know and love God. And so today, Jesus is going to go back to his hometown. You know where that is, right? We have a song about it. Oh, little town of Nazareth, how still we see the light. That's not right. <laughs> if you feel a little confused, Jesus was born in Bethlehem. We sing about that at Christmas time. After Jesus was born, Joseph was warned in a dream not to stay there, not to go back home, and so they moved to Egypt for a couple of years. After Egypt, they moved back to Joseph's hometown, which was Nazareth. So Jesus grew up in Nazareth. And today, we are going to learn about what happened when Jesus after he'd done these miracles other places, came back to his hometown of Nazareth. If you have your Bible, I would like for you to please open up to the book of Luke. So where we're reading today, this is after Jesus has done his miracles in other places, 
and I'm going to read first from Luke chapter 4, verse 16. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as was his custom, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and he stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke well of him and marveled at the gracious words that were coming from his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? So Jesus went into the temple. And when he got there, something that people would do is they would say, Ooh, ooh, me, me, pick me, I want to read the Bible. It probably wasn't really like that. They handed him a scroll, and it was the scroll of Isaiah. Now, we don't have scrolls. We have Bibles. But the words that he was reading were actually in this Bible that we have now in the book of Isaiah. So he reads this scripture, and they're like, oh, man, that Jesus, he's a really good reader. And he looks at them, and he says, today, this scripture has been fulfilled. What does that mean? Well, this, this promise in Isaiah was actually a prophecy, and a prophecy is when somebody, God gives them a special word and they can kind of know things that are going to happen later on. And it was a prophecy about the Messiah. So Jesus read this scripture from Isaiah, and he said, hey everybody, you've been waiting on the Messiah, guess what? It's me. And they were like, you? Little Jesus? We've seen you grow up. Aren't, aren't you Joseph's son? We've seen you all around this place. You're saying you're the Messiah? I've seen you out playing when you were a little kid. I watched you swim in the swimming hole. I remember when you came and you bought apples from me on the side of the road and you were just a wee little tyke. You, Jesus? They were surprised and, and kind of confused. So then we get to see Jesus' answer to this. And this is Luke chapter 4, verses 23 through 24. And it says, And he, Jesus, said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Physician, heal yourself. What we have heard you did at Capernaum, do here in your hometown as well. And he said, Truly I say to you, no prophet is acceptable in his hometown. So right off the bat, Jesus had a feeling what they were going to ask him to do. He thought they would say, okay, you need to prove that you are the Messiah. We've heard that the Messiah is doing miracles everywhere. Come and do them here. They didn't say that, but Jesus, because remember, he's fully God. He knew that's what they were going to ask. And he kind of let them know, I already know that if I do miracles here, you're still not going to believe in me. I can't imagine that made people feel really good, did it? But we did talk about that a little last week as well, that even when amazing miracles are done, that doesn't necessarily mean people are going to believe. It's only through the word of God that people believe. So he goes on to say now in verses 25 through 27, but in truth, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heavens were shut up three years and six months, and a great famine came over all the land. And Elijah was sent to none of them, but only to Zarephath in the land of Sidon, to a woman who was a widow. And there were many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. So Jesus reminds them that in the Old Testament, when there were prophets, sometimes even they would not get sent to God's people. They would go to other people. Now, you need to understand something about the Israelites. From the beginning, at the time of Abraham, God said, I have chosen you. So this made them feel like they were really, really special. I am chosen by God. I am chosen by God. I am loved by God. I am known by God. I am chosen by God. But what can happen is because we feel 
feel like we're special, we start to think other people aren't special. And that's what started to happen with the Israelites. They thought because God said, you are my chosen people, that that meant they were more special than other, other people. But really, what God was saying is, you are my chosen people, and I want to use you to tell other people about me. So in the Old Testament, Elijah and Elisha were sent to heal people, but not Israelites, other people. Because God wanted them to know, I love you, I know you. And the same thing here in the New Testament. Jesus says, you guys think that you're special just because you're chosen by God, but God loves everybody. John 3, 16 says, for God so loved the world, not just a certain group of people. Well, they did not like hearing that. They actually got so mad at Jesus. Later on in the scripture, they tried to pick him up and toss him out of town, but God protected him. And so here's what we need to know. We are loved and chosen by God. I am loved and chosen. You are loved and chosen. But God loves everyone. Everyone, everywhere. Think about it like this. If you haven't already picked up on it, it's a really good idea to have a piece of paper or maybe a notebook or a journal whenever we're having these lessons because it's fun to write stuff down. So on a piece of paper, I want you on one side to write the word bad. And then on the other side, I want you to write the word Good. And then put a line between them. I'll give you a minute. Pause the video if you need to. What I want you to think about is that when we think about people, when we think about actions, when we think about things, we usually think of them as either bad or good or somewhere in between. For example, bad, really, really bad, I would write murder, right? Like that's, that's one of the worst things that you can do. Pretty bad, but it doesn't seem as bad as murder is maybe stealing. Something that seems, okay, this is, this is bad, but we kind of all sometimes do it is lying. Okay, sometimes we feel like we, oh, you know what, I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to write it tiny. We do a, a, a little, a little tiny lie. Right, that's not as bad as a, a big, huge lie. It's just an itty, it's just an itty bitty little lie. And then maybe even moving a little more this way is we, I'm going to write this word, you may not know it. Uh, jaywalk, that's when you cross the street at a place where you're not supposed to cross, okay? There's no crosswalk there. So a lot of times we think of, of sins and actions as either being really, really bad or not so bad or somewhere in between. Now here's what I want you to do. I want you to think of some people that you know. Because we don't just do this with things, we do this with people too. We can think about people that we think, oh man, that person is a really, really, really bad person. Or that person, they're really good, they do everything right, they're super duper nice. Where would you put people that you know? Where would you put your brother or your sister? Where would you put your parents and your grandparents? Where would you put yourself? What about your teachers? Maybe some of your classmates? When we think about people, we kind of list them like this from bad to good. And what happens when we do that is we start to think that the people over on this side are more Christian or maybe God came for them. God's love is better for them than it is for the people over here. In the Bible, in the book of Romans, chapter 3, it says this, For there is no distinction, 
For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. What that scripture tells us is that it doesn't matter if you live way over here or way over here. Everybody has sinned and everybody is worthy of God's love. Think about it like this. If you were to look at a city skyline, you see lots of buildings. Some are tall, some are small, some are in between. And that's oftentimes how we look at sin. Some sins are a lot worse than other sins. It's like they're taller than the other sins. And so sometimes we look at some people and we think, your sin is so big, this person's is only just a little bit. You're like this, and I'm just kind of like this. But when God looks, it's like he's looking at the top of the city. And from the top, you still see the buildings, but they all look the same. While some sins may be worse than other sins, all sin has separated us from God. But the good news is Jesus came to save everyone. It doesn't matter how bad or how good, everybody needs to be saved by Jesus and his love and salvation is available for everyone. And so today, I want you to think about those people we talked about that you might list from bad to good and anywhere in between and every single one of them needs the same prayer. It's the same prayer that you need and that I need. And it is the prayer that we say, Jesus, I know that you are real. I know that I am a sinner and I am in need of salvation. I pray that you would forgive my sins and help me to know you and love you and follow you. That prayer covers everybody, anywhere, at all times. And it is the best decision anybody can make. That's why Jesus came. Would you go ahead and pray with me? Jesus, thank you so much that from the very beginning, you came to tell people that you are the Messiah, you are the Savior, and through you, we can be saved. I want to pray that all of us would recognize that we are in desperate need of your salvation. None of us is good enough to be saved on our own. Please help us to know you, love you, and follow you. And I pray that you would help us to share your message of love and salvation with everyone around us. I pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen.